Hello everybody, and we're about to continue our Let's Play series of Lords of the Fallen. Let's see where adventures can be taking us next. In our last episode, we made our way through the rest of Bramus Castle and defeated the Sundered Monarch, which essentially I think is the last boss of the game. At least in the ending we're doing, because I don't think we're going to be fighting a deer if we're on a deer's side. So I think what we have to do now is go to each beacon and use the rune of a deer on each beacon. So if we have to warp, let's see here. I think the Pale Butcher is one of them. Could be wrong though. <laughs> and we have to kind of work our way back into each situation. So I think we gotta go this way. kind of retrace our footsteps. It definitely feels like this is about the last episode of the playthrough. It's definitely been an adventure. Are there people here? Ah. Was not expecting a committee of enemies attacking us. Making it a little interesting. Okay, there we go. I think we got everybody. Oh, there's one more. Use the empowered rune of a deer. I think four more to go. I can only imagine what is going to be waiting at each one. Okay, I think our next one is going to be the Crow's Nest. Definitely an interesting fight from before. Cool arena. Cool area, actually. I always am partial to the snowy areas in games. Just something about them. Oh, ladder. Duh. <laughs> I was like, I don't think we roll down here. We 
got a friend waiting for us. Ouch. I think we go up for this one. Use the empowered rune of a deer. Okay, now the third one, I think, would be Upper Kalrath. And this one already has a bit of a path to get to, so this should be interesting. Kind of makes you have to remember all the moments of the game. Like, this is like the Light Reaper area, which is kind of cool. It's like forced reflection, which is nice. Oh. Remember these guys? They like to blow up. That's three. Okay, I think the next one would be on that big old tower. Now, which vestige is actually the closest to it? It might be the Abbey of the Hallowed Sisters, actually. Because if we work our way back, we should be pretty close. I think the Tower of Penance is what we're trying to get to.
don't think it's this way. I do kind of wonder what happened to Stomond. I haven't seen him in a while. Just an elevator that we have to take. Should be able to just run right on over. Oh boy. Might have to get a little creative here. Just for a moment. Okay, and now we have one left to go. And that is by Judge Cleric. Which could probably be kind of a, an interesting walk back, just because it was already kind of an interesting walk back. Let's see. I think that would be the Empyrean. There we go. Oh, 
And then straight up through here. Oh, we've got some of these guys. Now we're in Umbral, that's awesome. Okay, this, actually, I think there's one right out here that we can use. To hop on out. There we go. That's one. Ouch. <laughs> and there we go. Just in case, let's plant a seed here. Because you never know what's in store for us as we get closer. We got some friends down there. So when are they going to be in range? There we go. Okay, and then I think we got one down here. Oh boy. Almost fell right off. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, our last beacon. Enter the cleric's mind. Interesting. Kind of a cool looking area though. Like the exact opposite of what the game was. Very sunny. Blue skies. It's kind of nice. Use the empowered rune of a deer.
she's looking a little corrupted now. In the form of one who had once imprisoned him, the exile of deer finally returns home. And so begins his second reign, one informed by a rage born of betrayal. At his right hand, his infernal champion, but the first of Adir's new Rogar lords. I guess that would be us. A flame reignited amidst ashes. Pretty cool. As we have reached the end of the dark playthrough of Lords of the Fallen. Interesting ending, how the Judge Cleric's form is the one that put a deer into exile and now a deer is within her, so that's kind of a, a twist. Overall I had a, a decent time with the game, it was fun, lots of adventure, the exploration was really cool, the areas were pretty cool, I do wish m maybe some of them were a little more diverse, but overall pretty cool areas, like the Revelation Depths just kept going deeper and deeper until you hit Hair or Durbala, which was a pretty cool fight. I actually never went back to that area to figure out what to do with the, I think, 50 Scour Rings we had. Completely missed that part. But then there were some other areas, like the Fief of the Chill Curse, really cool spot. Again, partial to snowy areas. I guess Upper Calrath and Lower Calrath were pretty much similar areas. And the Empyrean area was decent. Pilgrim's Perch had a lot of a lot of stuff going on. How it went from rainy to getting pushed off ledges over and over. But definitely a cool spot. How it was like a little village area attached to the side of a cliff. Skyrus Castle was pretty awesome. Some of the NPCs were pretty cool as well. Especially Pieta and Molhue was pretty interesting. The blacksmith section was interesting as well, how you could actually pick sides. That was kind of cool. I'm trying to think of anything else I might have missed. The last area was was decent. You do run into seeing a lot of the same enemies. Quite a bit, actually. Like You'll see the same five enemies throughout the whole playthrough, almost. I do wish that there were some enemy diversity, but you do get to know the enemies. So it's kind of like you know how to fight them as you continue on. The whole umbral axiom mechanic was also pretty cool. Hopping in and out, there was always a sense of urgency when you were in umbral to try to get what you needed and then get out of umbral back into axiom. It was also kind of cool having that second life whenever you needed it. Ooh, forgot about the um, Forsaken Fen area. That was actually kind of cool. The whole dark, poisony, swampy, and the Hush Saint fight was pretty awesome as well. Best fight of the game? Hard to say exactly. The Hush Saint was pretty cool. Judge Cleric was really cool. The Light Reaper was decent. Music was nice. Actually, I think the best fight of the game that I that I had was probably the first fight with Pieta. She was definitely one of the cooler fights in the game. Probably one of the hardest fights in the game, too. I had to remember a lot to get that one down. Playthrough-wise, the um, agility build with the bow was pretty strong. Once you started dual wielding and upgrading your swords and then getting your bow, you were doing pretty good damage. I do wonder how the Radiance build would work, the Inferno build would work, and the Umbral build would work. Not sure I, I do a dedicated Strength build, but that could be fun too. I like how there's multiple endings, so if I ever play through the game again, I'd want to either try cleansing the beacons or try to go for that umbral ending. 
but overall, definitely a fun adventure. I would recommend it if you are into these types of games. Lots of intrigue, you never know which way you're gonna go, you get lost, there's danger all over the place. Definitely a fun time though. And with that, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in, and we'll be talking again real soon.